Hi everyone and welcome back. I'm here today with Ivy Brown, who is the Vice President of Brand Marketing and Advertising at TIAA. Welcome! Thank you. So excited to have you here. And one of the things that we've talked about together is about really having a curiosity muscle and building it early and flexing it and using it to get what you want. And you realize this way before you even had a career, right? Yes, it, it, <laughs> I can trace this back to a brand that I had a strong affinity for, um, believe it or not, in junior high. You know, junior Love. high, people are in, into what brand are you wearing, you know, fashion, et yes. cetera. And back in the 80s, um, you know, top brands were, you know, Benetton and The Limited and um, Guess. Yeah. And my beloved brand was Esprit. Love Esprit. And Love. The, I think the, the colorfulness of that brand yes. it gave it so much energy, and um, that was my brand to go to. And um, one of the things that I did, and you're going to call this crazy, but I did collect the tags that okay. came with the clothing. So Not you were the a price total tag, brand but, loyalist. Yeah. And the badge effect of those okay. tags, you know, they had a couple different layers, colors. Yes. I mean, it was just like this whole stack of tags yes. that I collected. And I'm like, well, what am I collecting these for? It's a lot of money of, yes. of all these clothes. Um, but it was just something that for me connected with me um, and that allowed me then to question, huh, where did this brand come from? Mm -hmm. Who's behind the brand? I ended up um, doing just a little bit of research, you know, whether it was in magazines or, or what have you back then, the internet did, did right. not exist. Um, the husband and wife who started that company, you know, they were on a, a publicity tour at some point. And um, just understanding, you know, what went behind them starting the brand and how they built it out. And the husband and wife, their name was Doug and Susie Tompkins. I don't yes. even know if they're still alive, but they started that company from the ground up yeah. and built it into a global brand. Um, I think at one point they licensed some things out and exited the business, but it was a brand that was around for, I would hmm. say, at least a decade, hmm. if not more. And you, so you as a kid, thought to say, not just like, oh, it's so great, look at this status symbol that I have these tags, this is so wonderful, but you thought to look into the company itself, and that sounds like it really ignited your passion for marketing. Yeah, yeah because I, I think recognizing you and have an affinity for a brand says something about, oh wow, that the, this company really did something to affect you in right. a positive way, right. and just wanting to know more about what was behind that badge. Um, was something that, you know, maybe I was in high school at the time and trying to understand business and brands, just being curious. Really. And it ignited something and for you. Nice. So tell me, yeah. you, you've you used curiosity throughout your career. Tell me how we build our curiosity muscle because really, I think we're taught to kind of conform, right? We're taught to say yes and to sit at the table quietly and to, you know, really um, not ask questions. So talk to me a little bit about how we can build that muscle. Well, I think first and foremost, you have to um, allow yourself to be vulnerable. Yes. You have to be comfortable with knowing what you know, mm -hmm. but also comfortable knowing what you don't know. And the first place to start is really the people you work with. Yes. And whether it's at your level or above you, cross-functionally, people have different expertise. And buying someone a coffee or having lunch with someone just to learn more about their world, their expertise, um, and recognizing you also have something to give back, too. I'm hmm. sure they don't know things that you know that you can share in building their knowledge base. So ask a lot of questions. And also, I know you talk a lot about reading and how to digest things that inspire you. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, so there are so many avenues today to seek knowledge mm -hmm. and, and absorb. Um, whether it's you know TED Talks or these free e-newsletters you can sign up for, um, certainly publications that are out there. Um, I find it really intriguing to pick up either an e-magazine or a paper magazine of a subject you know nothing about. And that really is not in your wheelhouse of something you would read for business or for pleasure. Um, so that you understand what it's like to be a brand who's advertising to that population. You know, obviously I'm not really into cars, but you know, you can pick up a car magazine and see what kind of brands advertise in there and how brands and um, experts are connecting with their audience in those formats. Mm. Um, additionally, there are so many e-newsletters that yes. are free to subscribe. Yes. And um, 
Smart Brief is a great one mm -hmm. because you can pick different verticals, whether you're in the food industry or the finance industry or the insurance industry. Um, they always have a mix of things that are relevant for that industry, but also then just basic, good to know things that are happening in the world. And even if you don't read the whole thing, if you just find one nugget in one day from one publication, that's just something that you allow your mind to like perc percolate on hmm. and you can carry that forward. I love, I love the concept of reading things that are outside of your wheelhouse, whether you're in marketing or not, because it may inspire you to find something new that you would never find if you weren't curious. That's right. That's right. Thanks, Ivy. Thank you.